I think one of the biggest political problems that we face with this is that climate change politically is a question of nimptu, not in my term of office. Now what I mean by that is that while the effects are kicking in if you live in somewhere like New Orleans in all probability or in parts of Africa, for us in Scotland politicians are going to look at what is forecast and within certainly a political time horizon and indeed probably within the lives of many of us the consequences in a direct sense are not going to be that bad. You know, okay, it's going to get wetter, it's already getting wetter, but it's also going to get warmer. And a lot of the comments that I've seen in the press and in the media is people saying, climate change, bring it on. We are no longer just individuals like each of these nails on the hand here, but we're actually deeply connected to one another. And whatever we do or neglect in another human being, ultimately, at a very deep level, we are doing to ourselves. We live in a society where power is not equally distributed and this inevitably has consequences on climate change and how people are able to influence it. I would like to see the Scottish Government use its resources so that action to combat climate change directly ties in with reducing poverty. You see, reducing poverty is something that Scottish people understand and are highly committed towards, but they haven't really connected it in with climate change. Whereas I look at all these roofs with nothing on them. I look at the prospect that there could be for having solar water heating panels on top of every one of those roofs, of having high levels of insulation in the houses. I think of the savings that that would make for families while at the same time cutting our carbon footprint. And I think that's where we need to be doing it so that people see that they can benefit by having a government that drives ahead policies that makes their lives easier while at the same time tackling our climate change targets. People don't want the big things, but they'll do small things. You know, Gordon Brown will witter on about plastic bags which are a tiny part of the problem and, in my view, mislead people. Watch my lips carefully. Uh, we're going to sign up to a um, uh, continuation of the Kyoto Agreement to cut our carbon emissions by five point something percent. And we are going to double airport capacity and increase road capacity by 40 percent. Now, that's the political process for you. They speak out both sides of their mouth because we, the electorate, in aggregate, want them to speak out both sides of the mouth. You know, it used to be that to fly within Europe cost several times more than going by train or bus or whatever. And the reality with cheap airlines is that to take the train to a European destination typically costs about three times more from Scotland than to fly there. Now, that needs to be tackled by taxation. Aviation should be taxed with a carbon tax so high that once again it costs you three times, let's say, to fly than what it costs to go by train. That would alter people's behaviour an awful lot and it would make sure that flying was used only for the things that really matter, for the real emergencies, for the real important things, instead of just being the mode of travel of first choice because it's comfortable and convenient. The targets that the EU and British government have set have been based upon ideal targets in order to meet climate change objectives. The problem is that what's coming out now, and this is an emerging field of understanding, is that there are downsides to that which uh, look like being counterproductive. And so I think the whole thing needs to be looked at again. And targets set which avoid destroying rainforests, avoid taking land off the poor and thereby pushing up food prices and so on. And if you can't do it like that, you have to conclude that biofuels in themselves are not going to be a sufficient part of the solution. And this is why I think there is no alternative but to heavily tax carbon. 
you know, you tax it. It's easy to tax. You tax it at the point of entry into the country or you tax it at the wellhead. You tax it and then you leave people to decide how much they use. And they pay a whopping great tax that discourages any profligate use of carbon. You can say, well, what about the poor? How will they heat their houses? Well, part of what you do with those tax revenues is you use it to socially adjust for that kind of thing, so that it's primarily the rich that pay and the poor are not unduly penalised.